Hello guys, welcome to another Tackle Tuesday, um, another homemade video. Seeing that we're in lockdown, I cannot go out and make you some fishing videos. So I'm going to keep this channel alive by talking through different species, talking through different tackle that I use. So today's topic is Khalyun. Um, I've had some questions about Khalyun and what setup do I use, what um, tries do I use, how do I collect my need? How do I connect my knee leaders? And what leaders do I use? Do I use braid leaders and do I use mono leaders? So today's discussion is going to be all about Khalyun. Um, we're getting to Khalyun season. Hopefully one day when we get out of this lockdown, we can go and fish and by that time it would be Khalyun season. So uh, I think it is very fitting that we discuss Khalyun as a topic. So I'm going to run down through my general setup for Khalyun. The, the rods and the reels, the trays, the leaders, the braids, and everything. So hopefully after this video, you guys will know the exact trays that I use, and as well as the rod and reel combinations. What you guys need to remember is the area that we fish for Khalyun, up here in the Southern Cape or Garden Root area, um, the EP guys will be quite similar to us, or the Eastern Cape guys will be similar to us, but the guys down in Cape Town and the West Coast, it's a different story, it's a different approach. They, they fish a lot of sand, they fish between bamboo, um, they fish much shorter throws, um, and also much lighter tackle, smaller hooks, lighter um, leaders, lighter line, and everything. But some of the things that I do here, you can implement there, and you can just go lighter on your tackle. While I'm on the topic of the area that we, we're fishing, that's the reason for the tackle that I use. Um, I can't, we can't go too light. We can't go 10, 11 foot rods. We can't go um, 1 0 hooks and 0 0.50 hooks, nukes, or 4 5. I know some guys fish like 4 5, 4 0, 4 4, 4 um, fluorocarbon. In our coast, you cannot fish that light. Um, our areas that we fish is very foul, there's a lot of structure. Um, the Khalyun are big. Uh, we often get Khalyun of 3.54 kilos, 4.5. Um, I've seen Khalyun up to 6 kilos on our coast. So there's some serious big fish. And in between those Khalyun, you hook that nasty creature, the Mr. Muscle Cracker. And if you're going to be fishing too light, you're going to be cut off. You're not going to be able to land that fish. Also, the big Khalyun in these areas where we fish, we fish around a lot of bombies, a lot of pinnacles, reef. Um, um, next to islands and um, the mussels on and then the red red bait beds on those rocks are very foul. So if you're gonna fish too light, even a big chalun, even a 2.5, 2.5 to a three kilo chalun is going to cut you off very easy. If you're gonna fish too light, it's gonna straighten your hook as well. I've seen that a lot of times. So I'm gonna start out with my lighter setup, like you guys seen in most of my videos. I always fish with more than one rod. I can't fish with one rod. It's 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 a, it's a problem of mine. Um, there's, I don't want to be caught off guard not you not having something um, to fish for a specific species or when I need to get to a certain reef or a certain spot and I can't throw there. It drives me insane. So guys, please remember before I get into the tackle and the gear that I use, none of those brands that I've named here is uh, sponsoring this video. So this is absolutely my tackle that I prefer to use and you guys can find something similar in the brands that you prefer to use but this is the brands that I like to use and the brands that um, I found most suitable for me. So yeah, my first setup and probably my go-to setup, um, all-rounder setup for Khalyun is a 13 foot Assassin Bluefish Special. I prefer the 13 foot because the 13 foot is short enough to fish the short gullies and long enough if I may have to make a slightly longer throw. It has got a very sensitive tip, enough backbone to pull the fish and um, just all around lack of setup to fish the whole day, make a lot of cars and doesn't make you tired. My preferred reel that I like to put on, on, on the setup is 8000 Biomaster, that's what I use most of the time. But you will see on this rod, there's a 6,500 6, spin fisher. I have two of these spin fishers. I often put that other spin fisher on this rod as well, depending on the area that I'm going to fish. 
and how foul it is because that spin fisher has got a bit thicker braid on it's got 40 pound on this biomaster that i'm at that i have here is at 8000 and currently it is fitted with 30 pound braid and um that's just a, like a thin setup like a sensitive so this is a rod and a reel that i use mainly um general general halloween fishing all around rocks gullies fishing towards points bombies all, all those sort of, sort of things but i also fish with a second setup and that is the and that is the assassin evo medium heavy zero edition um this is a 14 foot rod rated i think three to five ounce I don't really look at ratings, I just feel the right. Yes, three to five ounce. So I pair this up with a 6.5 spin fisher, 40 pound braid, and I use this rod when I need to throw a little bit further. I know there's big halyun and um, there's a lot of reef around, and I need to be a bit more aggressive when fighting the fish. I use this. Because um, it has a very, I can throw a very long way with this. I either use a four ounce or a five ounce on it, and a lot of the time in a lot of the times in our area where we fish, um, uh, you need to throw over some structure and throw towards an island sitting, I don't know, 120, 130 meters out, and you need to reach that island. If you're not going to reach that island or very close to it, you're not going to get the bite. So. Um, I often use this to get a bit more distance. It's, it's still soft enough and sensitive enough to catch the chalene and to land the chalene. And if you a cracker, I feel very safe uh, um, landing a massive muscle cracker on this tackle right here. And another thing why I take this Evo with me is that either when, when, when the water is clean and we fish deep or deep, deep spots or, or places where there's deep reef um, I'll use this for my short throws my, my assassin bluefish I'll, I'll use that for the shorter throws but often I want to target different species while I'm out fishing for Halloween so I'll use this to target red romans and um, oh, just a muscle cracker or anything while I'm out there and then also we have a lot of beaches with scattered reef and then the reef that reef opens and closes opens and closes and once it's closed there's a lot of sand and when there's a lot of sand, there's not a lot of chalene. So I don't want to walk five, six, seven kilometers down the beach and I'm out on a chalene mission and I get to the area that I want to fish and it's all sanded up. Then it's going to be very difficult to target the chalene. This is where this rod comes in place. I always have a chocker, some prawn, um, some crab or anything with me. And then I target cob, I target steenies, I target bartman or tashel fish as you guys know. It. So... That's where I use this rod. So I go down, go and fish for Halloween. It's all sanded up. Can't fish for Halloween, then I target cob. Um, it happened to me last year. I went fishing with some friends in, in, in Blombos. We got there. Um, we targeted the main species was Halloween. And when we got there, there was a nice little sandbank rolling. Um, I made seven throws on that sandbank. I got five cob and a shad, and I missed a cob and i got only two halloon for the day if i only had my halloon tackle with me that day would have ended up in catching only two halloon so the question i get asked most frequently when it comes to my tackle talks and and combinations and targeting species different species is the leader so the question either would be is i know you're fishing a mona leader or you're fishing a braided leader how long is your leader and do you attach mono to your um, uh, braided leader? So when it comes to when it comes to scratching for for edibles, I change my setups slightly. Usually when I'm fishing for sharks, I'll fish my 50 or 60, 65 or 80 pound braid top shot on my reel, and then I'll fish a 180 to 220 pound braided leader of about six meters onto my shark throws but when fishing for for edibles when i use 40 pound now i'm talking about reef species not for cob usually when i fish for cob and stennies i use a, a lighter braided leader of like 80 pound or 100 pound but now we're talking scratching in reef fishing for halyun halyun bronze bream red romans um, blacktail 
and everything else that, that that's bycatch. So we're scratching around in, in the rocks. When I'm using 40 pound braided line, just gonna thread this through. Okay. I fish 40 pound straight onto my 40 pound straight onto my reel. Then I just attach like a I don't know full both arm length of mono leader in front. So basically, the length of that leader is determined by how long my drop is when I throw. It can go like into your second or third guide, but I prefer this knot to be as close as possible to my rod tip. So the knot that I use is um, a FG knot. You guys can see there's my FG knot neatly tied. I'm not going to show you guys in this video um, how I tie my FG. The FG. I have a video on my channel on how I tie my FG. Um, the link will be in this description. You guys can go and check it out. I just fish a full arm length of 0.65 Maxima Ultra Green. This is my ultimate favorite Mona to use as leader and as a hook snoot for Halyun. It just takes a punch and I've tried and tested it over many, many years, probably 15, 17 years that I've used this for, for edible fishing and used in the rocks and I've got some really good fish and it just handles the punch. So while I'm, while I'm on the topic, I'm going to show you guys my trace now, my exact trace as well. While I'm on the topic of leaders, I want to go over to, to my lighter setup. I want to explain to you guys what I do here. Because I'm fishing 30 pound, when I know it's not very foul, I'll fish the exact same story, just a 30 pound straight to a mono leader. Um, fishing for Halina, I know it's not very foul. But I do like to put like a five or six meter um, braided leader on the 30 pound. Because the 30 pound is really thin. And I often fish 20 pound as well. But I prefer to fish 30 actually. I'm just gonna pull this off. There's like five or six meters of 50 pound braid. You can go up to 80 as well. And that's also tied with an FG knot onto my main line. I fish for 30 pound, 50 pound braided leader, just for a bit of you know abrasive resistance around the rocks. And then I do the exact same thing that I do with this mono leader. I attach a full two, two arm lengths of um, 0.65 maxima to this 50 pound braided leader, also via FG knot. So often you'll get snagged up and you'll get stuck and you'll break everything off. And then I use a different knot. I think it's called a Bob Sands or Slim Beauty. But I might make a video on that for you guys as well to show you how I tie that knot. That is a... It's a really quick knot and it's a really good alternative for the FG. It's really strong. Um, you don't have to use the FG. Usually the night before when I prepare or early morning or when I have a lot of time next to the water, I tie a FG. But when I'm in a hurry and the fish are biting, I use those other two knots. And I'm gonna show I'm gonna make a video on that and show that to you guys as well. So look out for that video. And I'm just gonna put this away now. So that I can start tying the traces for you guys and show you what I do. So obviously I only have the, the butt section of the rod here, but imagine for this purpose of the video that is threaded all the way through my rod. So it's threaded all the way through my rod. So here we have 0.65 Maxima Ultra Green. So I'm going to do my trace for you. And I already tied my circle hook onto my snoot. Um, I didn't have to show you guys this knot. It's just a snell knot, or the snell knot that I use, not the normal one. Um, if you want to check out how this, how I make this knot, um, as you can check it, it's very tight. It doesn't have that loose end coming out. So if you guys want to see how I make this snell knot, I have done a video like this in the past. It was one of my very first videos. I'll also put that down in that link down in the description, so you guys can check out how I make this knot. Just to save some time, I'm not going to show the knot now. Back to the leader. Sorry guys, I'm jumping around. I'm jumping around here a bit. But back to, back to the leader. This is 3 to 3. 
this is my leader and then number four Japan power swivel I tie this with a figure eight knot to my braided leader just gonna bring that camera closer so you guys can see how I tie the knot so obviously first of all you thread your swivel through your leader and I like to twist it turn it you'll see there's a little circle okay now we go you guys can see this is the main line going up to my rod tip just excuse my nails I painted some lures yesterday so there's your circle that we that we made then it's one two three turns okay I just want to go back show you guys again it's one two just check from the top finger to my finger point third time around and I take it off I just create that and then this back this tag and goes from the bottom section back through facing upwards and I just open my knot and then I just gently pull either side then wet it okay and it starts to form now all that we do is we pull that down tight to the swivel um, I'm just gonna, just gonna use my slithering pliers and I'm just gonna tighten that knot you guys can see there it almost like fuses in there you know that knot is set and we snip it off tag in right there there's your swivel on now that my swivel is on now it's time to time my hook snit this is like i said it is maxima 0.65 ultra green um, i'll often use 0.60 as well especially when the water is clean so the length of this hook snit is probably like 40 to 45 centimeters i take this a little bit extra to tie the knot I'm not going to show you guys how I tie the knot because I've already done that, so I'm just going to tie it on. Very important what I did here. This is my leader going to my rod tip, and this end is where I tie my hook snit. Okay, there you'll see my hook snit. It's on the opposite end of the, the swivel. Okay, I'll show you guys now why. I'll tell you guys now why I do it. Then I take my sinker trace. And guys, really very important of the sinker trace. Your sinker trace needs to be lighter than your than your leader and lighter as your hook snit. I'm using 0.50 millimeters. That's the diameter of the mono. You guys will see I talk in diameters are not in strength I'm going to use 0.50 um, I usually use 4.5 maybe 5.0 so this we just tie with a normal blood knot I'll show you guys which end as well just a normal blood knot because I want that to break off you also can tie a little granny knot just very close to your swivel so that when you get when you get stuck you can part it off okay guys just a quick tip also what you can do for um, not to lose as many sinkers you can take a piece of dacron and you thread it through your, your sinker and you just make a little loop knot a little dacron on here then we measure our distance i like it shorter just a normal blood knot onto the dacron and i'll tell you guys now why i did a dacron and explain where i tie the swivel you guys will see that my sinker trace is tied onto the same side as where my leader goes on and my hook snoot on the opposite side the reason for this is that you can see that swivel, when you're fighting the fish, that swivel is straight. 
So when it's going over the rocks and back and forth, and remember I told you guys it is very far where we fish for this for, for this chalun. So when that um, swivel is going back and forth over the structure, it's going to go much easier over the structure and it's got less chance of snagging. Because once the swivel snags, you've got problems and you're not going to lose your fish. So that's going to go over the structure and your sinker will trail. And that's very important where the lighter sinker trace comes in. So when that sinker gets stuck, you can break the sinker trace off or snap the sinker trace and then you, your fish is still attached and you're gonna fight, you can fight your fish. So my sinker trace is about 30, 25 to 30 centimeters and it needs to be shorter than my hook trace. The reason for that is, is when I'm, I just want it to be slightly higher up in the water. If it's longer like that, now you're fighting your fish that sinker is going to drag all the way along the bottom while you're fighting the fish and it's going to get it's a lot easier for your sinker to get snagged and stuck and bigger chances of losing a fish that little piece of um, dacron that I put on there is just if you tie it directly onto your sinker when you reel when you wind out and while it's rolling on the bottom on the sea floor it bumps against the rocks and it might damage that sinker tray so when you throw you throw your sinker off and you don't want to pull over a, a piece of um, structure or a ledge and then bump your sinker and your sinker falls off. So that just prevents that from happening and you don't lose unnecessary sinkers. Obviously the next question would be that why I'm not using any float. I don't like to use floats with my with my Um To me it feels that when you're using a circle hook and that when you throw your float moves down and it sits right against your bait and often when, when, you, when you catch a fish with a float you'll see actually there's teeth marks in that float to me it feels that um, and I've experienced it that I, that I miss more fish and when I have a float on because when they take the bait they, they get hold of the float as well and that interferes with the hookup rate with a circle hook okay when I use a float I put the float about 10 centimeters, 7 to 10 centimeters above my hook. Then I fix it with a toothpick so it can't move down to my bait. I really don't like it when it's sitting right against my bait. So I'll rather have it um, just about 7, 8 centimeters, 7 to 10, 15 centimeters from my bait, and um, then I'll use it. But I actually only use floats when I use J hooks. The only reason for using J, um, floats with JX is that because a JX gets more stuck more often, and you're using that float, it's just just above the sea floor and it doesn't get stuck as often. But I prefer using circle X. Um, I can definitely see, even when I'm using a float with the JX, I can see that I get a lot less snags and a lot less stuck when I'm using circle X than with with JX. Also, much better hookup rates on the JX, oh, on the circle X. And then my preferred circle hook that I use is the Adrenaline 2 -0. And then late summer, I'll go up to Adrenaline 3 -0. Um, Especially when we get those bigger Chalun, the 3.5 to 4.5 kilo Chalun, and there's a lot of cracker in the water, then I fish a 3 -0. So that's not your normal 0 0.50, 4.5, 1.0, number one hooks, and what a lot of the guys use in Cape Town. It's very different down there. Oh, it's a lot heavier tackle than the guys is used to fishing in Cape Town and the West Coast. So yeah, guys, this, this tackle and this setup that I'm using here, it's not only for Chalun. Like I said, um, I use this for Cobb, for Stienis and everything. You can use this exact set, scratching setup right here, as well as the Evo, to fish for bronze bream. Um, to fish for your blacktails, normal reef species, you can even use it for steenies, you can use it for bartman. And when I fish for, for, for otties or, or bronze bream, I use the exact same setups, the exact same traces, the exact same um, reels, braid, the exact same trace. I just often when the otties are feeding very shy or very skittish, I go over to a 1-0 or a 2 J hook and then I'll fish a float on it. That's the only difference. A part of that, the whole trace, everything is exactly the same as what I showed you guys here. So guys, please remember, Chalun is, you're only allowed two per person per day. 
and guys please see that as um, not as a target for the day try to put back as much as possible one thing the guys forget it is two halloon per person in the in your possession so if you have one halloon back at home in your freezer you only allowed one halloon to kill that day even if you're within your legal limit for the day and you've only killed two halloon and you have one in the fridge you have three halloon in your possession and you're only allowed two so you're one over the legal limit so guys please remember that rule and that rule applies to all species and all um fish regulations so please remember that it's only two halloon per person in possession it is a i know it's a lacquer bright fish and we all enjoy a lack of fit halloon goes down very well and um, but please don't kill them unnecessary um, only if you want to keep one for the braai i often go and i fish and, and in our areas we get get two dose halloon and we really clap them and i've caught 14 15 16 18 halloon in one session and then i don't kill any um, for me it's just fun to fish um, although i do like a halloon and um, but yeah guys it's it's all about the fun that's why we fish guys that's it that's my halloon tackle if you guys have any questions uh, winter is upon us so i am definitely going to make um, one or two halloon videos for you guys i'm also going to have a massive focus on cob this, this this winter so we're done with summer maybe we're going to have one chance of fishing for sharks again after this lockdown but my main focus is going to be on edible fish this winter um, so if you want to see more tips more tricks and some actual fishing of edible fish, cob, white steam rust, bellman, red roman, chalun, ach, and the list, the species just goes on. Subscribe to Zuluk Fishing, share this video, like it, it helps me quite a lot. So, guys, appreciate it. Cheers, stay, stay safe.